The majority of historical accounts written about women tend to portray them in a derogatory light, placing them at the bottom of the social hierarchy. Women were always regarded as socially and economically subordinate to their husbands, from the Khoi Khoi of Africa to ancient China and all the way to the Victorian civilization. A woman's sole purpose in life was to serve her male counterpart. In this episode, we will debunk some of the myths about Victorian women. The patriarchal culture that prevailed in England during the 19th century held the belief that women were fragile and gullible, beings who should defer to the authority of males. On the other hand, religion had the potential to instill in women a sense of autonomy and liberation from male dominance. Women considered the practice of auricular confession as a means to demonstrate their independence, because it allowed them to disclose their personal thoughts and worries to a clergyman. At the time, certain branches of the Anglican Church were beginning to support the practice of auricular confession. As a result, this could, in the opinion of some, threaten the powerful role of the husband or father by substituting an alternative patriarchal system, and many critics warned of the dangers associated with the confessional, particularly the weakening of the male-dominated family structure. Do not be fooled by the lace doilies and lavender sachets. The life of a Victorian-era woman in England was not necessarily as we believe it to have been. Here are six things that women in the Victorian era did not do. 1. They did not pass away in their youth. In England throughout the 19th century, the average life expectancy was merely 40 years old, yet that number can be misleading. There is no question that the rates at which newborns and children died as a result of illness, starvation, and accidents were significantly higher than they are today. But if a girl made it to adulthood, she had a very excellent chance of surviving to a ripe old age of 50, 60, 70, or even older if she was lucky enough to make it that far. These odds only got better as the century went on thanks to advancements in cleanliness, nutrition, and medical treatment that resulted in longer lifespans for Victorians. 2. They did not get married at a young age. At the close of the 18th century, the typical age of a man's first marriage was 28 years old, while the typical age of a woman's first marriage was 26 years old. The average age of English women dropped over the 19th century, but it never went below the age of 22. Of course, patterns varied according to social and economic class, with women from the working class having a tendency to marry slightly older men than their counterparts from the aristocratic classes did. But the myth that all English women got married before they left their teenage years is completely false, despite the fact that it is the dominant one in current culture. 3. They did not marry any of their other relatives. In the early 1800s, it was completely customary to marry your first cousin, and the practice did clearly give certain benefits, including the following. It was far simpler for young ladies to meet eligible bachelors inside their own families, and they were more likely to be courted by them. Wealth and property were more likely to remain in the same hands. However, as the 19th century progressed, the practice of marrying within the same family became less prevalent. The expansion of transportation options made possible by the rise of the railroad, and other general economic advancements substantially increased the pool of potential husbands available to young women. During this time, there was an increase in people's knowledge of birth abnormalities associated with reproduction among relatives. This awareness peaked during the Victorian era. However, weddings between relatives remained common among those in the upper class. For example, Charles Darwin married his first cousin Emma Wedgwood, and Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were also first cousins themselves. 4. They did not wear corsets that were pulled very tightly. The common image of young women putting themselves into corsets and having their maids pull them up as tightly as possible is a little bit deceptive. Although the fashions of the Victorian era did emphasize a small waist that could only be achieved through the careful application of whalebone and ribbon, the majority of Victorian-era women wore their daily corsets with a healthy dose of moderation, not to the point where they were swooning on the divan. Additionally, throughout this time period, corsets did not exist just for the purpose of making a fashion statement. It was widely believed that wearing a corset would encourage a good, healthy posture and help to maintain the appropriate alignment of the internal organs. And the severe practice of removing ribs to trim the waist, which was claimed to have flourished in the Victorian era, simply did not exist at all during that time period. 5. There was no pink in their attire. 
our ancestors from the 19th century would be perplexed, and most likely amused, by the way we classify gender-specific hues today. Because white garments and diapers could be bleached, white was the color of choice for infants and young children of any gender up to roughly the age of six or seven. This was the case even though white did not prevent staining. As children got older, the colors that they wore in their clothing became lighter copies of those that adults wore. The color red was associated with power, vitality, and masculinity, whereas the color blue was seen to be delicate, feminine, and dainty. Therefore, it was more common to see young boys dressed in pink, whereas young girls enjoyed wearing light blue. Not until the early 20th century, and possibly not until as late as the 1940s, did the color pink start to be universally allocated to girls, while the color blue was given to boys. 6. Victorian women were not humorless. In addition to supposedly being prude, it's often said that Victorians had no sense of humor. But they were just as fond of a good joke as people are today. The magazine Punch, founded in 1841, was entirely dedicated to humor and satire. Newspapers, books, and the theater all featured various jokes and puns. Victorians joked about the same kind of stuff we do today, politics, famous people, family stress, and other aspects of everyday life were fair game. Some punny Victorian era zingers to try at your next open night include, who is the greatest chicken killer in Shakespeare? Macbeth, because he did murder most foul, and what is the difference between a butcher and a flirt? One kills to dress, the other dresses to kill. Well these are some of the few myths that people have about Victorian women and the era in general. For more such videos check out our channel. Check out more on our channel and subscribe, until next time ts bye for now.